I'm very, very clear that once you are really aligned with what you want, why you want it, you will start to see spiritual breadcrumbs. You will start to have synchronicities, meaningful coincidences show up in your life. But in order to see them, you have to be present. You have to be listening and paying attention. And when they show up, you have to pick them up. Hello, hello. Welcome to Spiritual Real Talk. I'm Megan Monahan. I am so glad that you're here and really excited to dive into a story today. You've reached story time with Megan. Get excited. And it's a story that I alluded to. I think it was in the first episode that was dropped on this channel. And it has to do with manifestation and specifically an example from my life, my story, from when I originally got a job working for Deepak Chopra. And I think I used it as a a little teaser in that first video because it's one of the moments in my life that and signing a major um, book deal with like a major publishing house. It's those two examples really specifically that on paper, if you looked at them, really It didn't make that much sense, especially getting a job working for Deepak Chopra. Didn't make a ton of sense on paper. Absolutely wouldn't have been something that if I was looking at like the roadmap of how things are going to go and like step one, step two, step three would have said, yes, that tracks like none of it tracks. And the reason I like to share these stories is because they house a really powerful framework for manifestation that you can absolutely apply to your life, to your story, and over and over and over again will really show up for you. In my experience, they have continued to show up for me, these tools and these practices and really this overall general context through which I manifest. And I think it's really powerful before we even dive into this specific story to acknowledge that your mind can only dream so far out of your current state of reality. So you hear a lot of conversation around manifestation, talk about, be really specific with what you want. And I think depending on your makeup, maybe depending on your kind of context for life and your set point, that might be a really powerful practice. For me, the greatest manifestation for me comes when I am really detached from the specifics. One of my favorite mantras that I use or affirmations is maybe I don't know what's best. Because let me tell you that like inner New Yorker in me really thinks I know what's best for myself and probably for you, for like whoever wants to give me an ear. Like that part of me That ego absolutely thinks that it knows what's best. And I find that when you can put down that kind of specific order from the menu and instead focus on why you want what you want and what underlying feeling or inherent desire that tangible manifestation is going to satisfy, that is when the absolute best version of that desire can truly like drop into your sphere. So the first time I ever really experienced that, and and maybe actually not, if I, if I go back, I haven't actually audited prior to meditation in my life, if, if this ever showed up before. So maybe I'll do that as my homework. But the first really big example that I have to source is getting a job working for Deepak Chopra. And, and it's a good story. And it was a really monumental point in my journey and real kind of fork in the road that totally changed where I have ended up. And the fact that I'm sitting here talking to you lovely folks, right? So the year is maybe 2011, end of 2010, maybe, probably 2011. And I had left my job working in the music industry. I got really clear after doing two different retreats at the Chopra Center, which is down in San Diego at the time. I got really clear that what I wanted to focus on wasn't, you know, ticket counts for some artists show in London or 
proofing contracts or, right, I was really clear that what I wanted to do and what was making me feel energized and activated in the most powerful way was helping other people learn the tools, have access to the tools and practices that over the last year and a half, two years had really changed my life, transformed me as a person and in turn totally transformed and shifted my life, my health, my my mental health, my physical health, the way I navigated emotions, the way that I moved through relationships, all of it had really shifted monumentally. And I felt this deep, deep calling to help other people um, learn the things, experience the transformation and, and you know change their life. And I really didn't know what that was going to look like. I wasn't attached by any means or even thinking, oh, I could work at the Chopra Center. You know, I could move from LA down to San Diego and create a life here and continue to do my own work and also help people and be a part of this, you know, purpose-driven organization that had helped me so much. No, No part of my brain was thinking that. In fact, and I say this just full transparency, no judgment, please. My brain, my mid 20 something brain thought you live in LA. You want to work in wellness. You should work at Lululemon (laughs) because what changes lives more than a great pair of leggings? I don't know. Certainly not like all these deeper practices, you know, the leggings are where it, where it's at. Um, Shout out to Lululemon because low key, they did become a massive part of my journey later down the road, but it wasn't, it wasn't for this moment. It wasn't for this version of Megan. So I did apply for a job working for Lululemon. Spoiler alert. I I didn't get the job. And in the midst of, it was over like a week period. I had a, I remember this part vividly. I had a job interview, a group interview on Monday where we were asked to like come to the group and and share something, share a practice, a tool, a, a whatever, a stretch, a whatever it was. And I brought in, because I had just been at a retreat that was all about emotional integration, I brought in basically a little one sheet on how to practice tapping, EFT, emotional freedom technique. I'll never forget this. I printed out pictures of Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt and put dots on their faces and gave one to everybody with all of the, you know, tapping points where you would use your fingertips and tap and, and, you know, as a tool to regulate your emotions. And so I, you know, read to everybody how to do this. I shared that I had just learned this practice and that it was really effective and, and went through the rest of the interview. I didn't get it. I thought I nailed it, but I didn't get it. And so I'm thinking, okay, you know, I wonder what's going to happen. I wonder what's going to happen next. Like, I wonder where I'm going to work now. Maybe there's like a juice bar that I can go find my way into. Again, I had no experience in wellness. So no part of me is thinking, you know, I should shoot for the star. I thought Lululemon was shooting for the stars. So later that week, I uh, had made a call to the Chopra Center because I ordered Um, days earlier, I had ordered some herbs. I had started taking these adaptogenic herbs as part of my physical health regime after being at a retreat there. And I ordered some herbs from there and they sent me a package and it contained none of the herbs and like a totally different order. And also side note, and I will start getting to like the practices and like the kind of benchmark in this story that house the tools. Um, but I'm going to tell you the story first, but shout out, I'm going to interject and go on a tangent very slightly shout out to things not working out. And maybe this will be a separate video entirely, but oftentimes in the moment when something seems like it didn't go the way we wanted it to down the road, right? If you don't press pause in the middle of the movie, if you get to the end of the movie, Oftentimes it works out. So this is one of those moments where I ordered something, I didn't get what I ordered, and I thought to myself, ugh, this is annoying, and I I didn't get what I wanted, this is bad. And ultimately, because I didn't get the herbs that I ordered, I had to make a call, and I ended up talking to the person in products who handled all of the products. And as I'm talking to her and you know, giving her my name and, and where I live, she said, oh my gosh, Megan, I know exactly who you are. This is Lisa. I'm the one that 
um, signed you up for all of your programs in the past. You know, so I had spent a considerable considerable amount of time talking to this woman and and connecting with her about my experience at these retreats and and so we talked for you know 20 minutes and she said how are you doing what have you been up to and what do you you know what are you looking to do and and I said to her I'm trying to work in wellness actually and I just I didn't get it but I applied for a job at Lululemon and I'm just trying to be open to what's out there I really want to help people transform the way that I have and, you know, share these practices, share these tools. And as we're talking, she says, you know, there's a job opening here and I think you'd be really great. Shout out to the section on the resume where you put your transferable skills, because again, no experience in wellness, (laughs) nothing about my resume up until that point screamed. She would be really good at this in based on what she's been doing. And I connected with her. We talked. I said, would you be open to sending my resume? And she said, absolutely. And I went home. I emailed it to her. I got a call a couple days later. It was a Wednesday. I'll never forget because I had to pull over to the side of the road to take the call. And it was the person from the department that that was hiring. And, and she said, I'd love to meet with you. Can you come down on Friday? And so I drove down to San Diego that Friday, two days later, I shared that I wanted to work in wellness and help people transform their lives and why it was so impactful to me and why it felt like such a passion. And I was hired on the spot, got a lease. I want to say maybe the next day, if not, maybe even that day, I might have gone down and, you know, stayed down there and looked at apartments and found something. If not, it was the following week, signed a lease that wasn't totally out of budget, but it would have been a real stretch if I didn't end up being good at this job, which had a part of the compensation be based on performance. So like leaps of faith galore, (laughs) one leap of faith wasn't enough. You're moving to San Diego for a job that you've never done, like leap of faith. Oh, your compensation's based on performance, leap of faith. Oh, you don't know anything about leap, all the leaps of faith. And I moved down there, totally uprooted everything, massive leap of faith. And that was the beginning of a totally different existence, an opportunity to literally be around the most incredible spiritual thought leaders and really like pioneers in this world the ability to have access to you know Deepak Chopra and and to have master teachers teaching me and being a part of also learning the business side of wellness and how to create experiences how to show up for a client a customer how to hold space I mean when I tell you that it was a 360 degree immersion because that's what my whole life there was based on and everyone that I knew that I became friends with worked there and it became the most incredible next couple of years that I worked there full time I became a certified meditation teacher I traveled, I was a part of retreats, and I can absolutely say that had that not happened, I don't know what that would have looked like for me. And I don't know if it would have been as potent of an experience and therefore a version of myself that kind of steeped, if we're if we're gonna go with like a tea analogy here. You know, that that tea that I was put into was saturated and potent and it ended up drawing out of me like the deepest essence of who I am and helps me learn and evolve as as a person as a you know being and then as a teacher and in all these different ways and what I always come back to is again I'm going to spell out this framework for you which is number one when you feel like you really want something if it feels like you're attached to the tangible part of the desire ask yourself why do i want this why do i want this job why do i want this relationship why do i want even something little this this new bag why do i want to move what's the inherent underlying why and and what what's the feeling or ultimately and ideally 
how is this connecting you to furthering your fulfillment of purpose? I always say like the fast track to manifestation is manifesting something that allows you to be more in purpose within yourself and then in service to the world. That's when I think the universe really like clicks into high gear when it's like, oh, she wants this thing for herself, but she wants it so that she can evolve into a different version of herself that can then be of service in a bigger way. You know, so so in my experience, that's like the golden ticket hack. Second thing, I'm very, very clear that once you are really aligned with what you want, why you want it, you will start to see spiritual breadcrumbs. You will start to have synchronicities, meaningful coincidences show up in your life. But in order to see them, you have to be present. You have to be listening and paying attention. And when they show up, you have to pick them up. You have to engage with them. So if let's just say when I was calling the Chopra Center and speaking to Lisa and she said, what are you up to? I said, um, nothing. I'm just, you know, hanging out, trying to figure it out, period, end of sentence. She might have said, okay, cool. Well, good luck. I'll send your herbs. Instead, I said, I'm actually really looking for a way to be in service and and help people and share what I've learned. And I engaged. I didn't quite realize that it was a spiritual breadcrumb, but I was really present and I really engaged. And then when more spiritual breadcrumbs showed up, oh, and I'll also say in that little part of the the story, I also said to her, if I send you my resume, can you send it in? Instead of just saying, okay, great. I'll like check out the link online, right? Engaging, picking up the breadcrumb, engaging with it. When I got the call, can you come down for an interview? Absolutely. When I got the job, <laughs> I was like, can you, can you show up for this breadcrumb? And that looked like a leap of faith in that moment for me. And as you move through the kind of journey of that manifestation, you will likely be faced with a lot of even really subtle moments of, do I want to say yes and lean in from a place of trust, from a place of expansion and abundance, or... Am I going to let fear be the thing that guides me? And ultimately, you know, this is a similar story to signing a book deal. Maybe that's a separate video. But again, you know, when I signed a book deal, I didn't want to write a book. I wanted to share my voice with more people. I wanted to share these tools with more people than I could reach just teaching classes in Los Angeles. You can reach way more people with a book with words, you know, it's way more accessible than someone having to go to a retreat, let's say, being able to go buy a book. Um, So get really clear on why you want what you want. Be committed and stay present in the journey of that manifestation. And when you see spiritual breadcrumbs, say yes, pick them up, engage with them, come from a place of worth and don't be afraid to ask something specific like hey can you send my resume or hey do you know anyone I can talk to about this or right don't be afraid to ask for what you need support with and then when it shows up keep saying yes from a place of love from a place of trust and abundance and expansion I actively actively you know hand the credit of everything that looks on paper impressive in my life to that inner work. It's not necessarily the outer tangible mechanics that you have the most power over. It's that inner work, that inner work. How present are you being? How intentional are you being? How connected to purpose are you? And how much are you showing up in those even really subtle ways and engaging with the world around you to co-create what it is that you want the most. It's really fun. It's so much fun to like play in this energetic exchange with the universe. So a little bit of homework. This was a longer episode. So thanks for hanging with me. I did want to tell you that story and the homework. I don't really give you guys homework, but here we go. Homework, take out a journal, write down, if I didn't have to worry about the mechanics of its creation, what would I wish for? If I didn't have to worry about how or when or who, what would I wish for? Second prompt, why do I want this? Why do I want it? 
Why does it matter to me? Third thing, what do I want? Why do I want it? How will this manifestation help me be more in service of the world? How will this manifestation help align me more with my purpose, which is connecting with who you are and then being of service from that place to the world around you? Okay, those three questions. What do I want? Why do I want it? And and the first one, if I didn't have to worry about how it was going to happen, what would I want? Why would I want it? And how does this manifestation align and connect me with purpose? Go and do that. And then set that intention, engage with the spiritual breadcrumbs, the synchronicities. I have another good story about that. I'll, we'll do a whole other video on synchronicities. Um, in the meantime, go do your homework, go manifest, drop in the comments what you're manifesting, how it's going. I'm happy to do more videos about specifics of manifestation. It's one of my favorite, favorite topics. And in the meantime, always, always um, sending you lots of love. Make sure you like this video, share it with anyone that it might benefit. Make sure you're subscribed so you know when the next one is dropping, all the things. Drop something in the comment. Um, I love connecting with you all and, and hearing how you are relating to these so that I know what you want more of. So um, have the most amazing rest of your day, whatever it looks like. Be well until uh, the next time we connect on here and always, always sending you lots of love.